Praise the Lord. We'd like to again welcome everybody by way of internet. We thank you for your comments. We pray that today's sermon will be a blessing to you as well. Amen. I want to talk to you about how to live in troubled times. Amen. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yes. yes. Troubled times. Yes. If you don't know it, nobody told you we're living in troubled times. You know why? Because we're living in the end times. Amen. If you know anything about your Bible, you can see that we're in the midnight hour. Amen. I believe the next thing on God's holy calendar is the return of His Son, Jesus Christ, which we call the rapture or the catching away of the church. Yes. Amen. I'm excited. I'm looking forward to it. And uh, we're going to see today how the best way it is to work through our troubles. Because too many people, church folks, mm -hmm. allow their troubles to dictate to them. Allow their troubles to engulf them, where they it, it hinders your faith. And the Bible says it's impossible to please God without faith. So the devil would it would make sense that the devil would attack your faith, so that he could weaken it all the time, so that you could uh, not be a uh, half of what the Lord intended you to be. Jesus. Amen. Jesus. Then the Scripture said, I, "I wish that you would be the head and not the tail." Amen. That's what God's desire is. Didn't he? Scripture said, I wish above all things, above everything else, I wish you would prosper, be in health, even as your soul prospers. Amen. In spite of your troubles. Just because you're a born again Christian, just because you're saved, love Jesus, come to church, or put a few bucks in the plate, sing, have hallelujah songs, doesn't mean you ain't going to have troubles. That's right. Actually, you're going to have more troubles. Right. <laughs> Because the devil's mad because he lost you. Amen. He had you, so he wasn't worried about it. Amen. He gets more upset when he loses you. Amen. That's a soul yeah. that he was trying to drag into hell. Misery loves company. Yes. Oh, does it. The battle for the soul. Thank you, Jesus. A lot of troubled souls out there. A lot of blinded. The Bible says oh, that the prince of the air, the devil, yes. the god of this yeah, world brother. system, has blinded the minds of them who believe not. Amen. Mm. But we also have to realize not all we have in trouble in the world. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure out what's going on in the world when we see all these terrible things happening now worldwide. All at once. People say, oh, they've been talking about Jesus coming back forever. My mama, my grandpa. They all, that's right, they have. Mm -hmm. But there has never... Never been a generation ever capable of being the last generation until this generation. If you line up the word of God and you know prophecy, then you know that that's true. They didn't have the technology 50 years ago to usher in the one world system. The mark of the beast, the antichrist. All that's there now. You can't go anywhere. You can't buy anything without numbers. Amen. Barcodes. Amen. Try buying a house, a car, or anything else without social security number. Amen. Okay? First thing they ask you, what's your credit card number? That's right. <laughs> you know, and on and on. We're, we're becoming a, a cashless society. Amen. That's part of the Antichrist system. Hardly anybody carries cash today. No. It's all plastic. And now they're having so much trouble with plastic and, and identity theft and all that. Before you know it, they already have the chip out for so many different things. Mm -hmm. Troubled times. <clears throat> troubled times. But we should not be troubled by troubled times. Matter of fact, the Bible says when you see all these things starting to come upon the earth, look up for your redemption draweth nigh. Jesus is getting close Thank to returning Jesus. for his church. The body of Christ. Amen? Hallelujah. How can we handle troubled times? Because we all have them. Okay? We all have them. Troubled. Some people have a lot of trouble with finances. Okay? A lot of people have money problems because, you know, your, your check's getting less and your bills are getting more. Okay? I mean, you can't go anywhere anymore. Everything is uh, so expensive and, and it's it affecting everybody. Even the wealthy are crying, ouch. Come on. Mm -hmm. So uh, some other people have trouble with sickness. The devil attacks their bodies. You know, just because you're a Christian don't mean that you don't go through these things. 
We're not guaranteed a bed of roses in this walk with no, God. No, no. He said, pick up your cross and follow me daily. Every day there's a crisis. Every day we have a, a battle over our soul with the enemy. Every day we, we face all kinds of troubles. All right? We have trouble in our marriages. Should I go there? <laughs> trouble with our marriages, our relationships, our friendships. As Christians. Now, should that be? No. We should by, by now, we should be mature enough in the Lord to handle these kind of attacks. Because that's what they are. They're attacks. Mm -hmm. Paul said we ain't supposed to be ignorant of the trickery or the devices of Satan, how he attacks. And if he can, doesn't it make sense? If he, if he could attack the home, if he could attack the marriage, hmm, then he comes to conquer and divide. Then you can't pray right. You can't do right. You don't want to go to church right. You don't want to give right. You're, you're all bogged down in these struggles with the marriage. And on and on it goes. The devil is having a field day with marriages. There's a lot of divorces in churches today. Shouldn't ought to be with the believers. But it is. So where does the... Where can we lay the blame? Just on the devil? No. That's right. Because God gave us power over the works of the devil. That's right. He said, "For all, He said, over all the works of the devil." Amen. No, yes. it, the, the buck stops with us. Okay. When we read the Word of God, what did James say? Don't be just a hearer of the Word, but be a doer of the Word. Right. If we did what God said to do. Then we wouldn't be so focused on just my four and no more and we'd be able to reach out to a lost world. Can I get a witness? Amen. After Amen. all, that's what it's all about. That's why you got saved. Amen. So that you can go to heaven but also try to bring others with you. Amen. But if you're so caught up in your own mess, come on somebody, you. then you can't get caught up in helping somebody else. The Bible says we go through adversities, that's trials, tests, and tribulations, all right, so that we can help a brother and sister who's going through their adversities. That's why we go through things. So that we're able to learn, grow, mature, get experience, learn patience, and then pass that on to someone else who's going through like, like things. Amen? Amen? We have all kinds of trouble. Trouble in the marriage, trouble in the family, trouble with our children. It's a mess today. A whole different yes. world than when I grew up in. Oh yes, whole different world. You don't see families eating at the dinner table anymore. Mm. Everybody's got their own room, their own television, their own little gadgets, all their own things. Yeah. <clears throat> That's what the devil's come to do: rob, kill, and destroy. We all face temptations. <clears throat> There's troubles of all kinds of temptations because nobody's perfect. The only one that ever walked on water was Jesus. Peter tried it. He almost drowned. <laughs> Amen. Amen. That's right. So nobody's perfect. Amen. From right. the pulpit to the That's pew, right. we all struggle in one way or another. But I want to share with you today on some of the ways, not all, but some of the ways, the best ways to face your troubles. Nehemiah in the Old Testament, chapter 1, verse 7, says it like this. The Lord is good. If that was all he said, that'd be enough. Amen. The Lord is good. That says it all right there, really. But it says, the Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble. That's where we miss it. You know, we, we try to fight our battles in our own strength. We try to figure it all out, worry about it, work it out. And we always come up short. But if we can only remember that the Lord is good. Yes. He's got your best interest at heart. When you yield and surrender to Him, He becomes a stronghold. Amen. Amen. That's a solid Amen. foundation. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Problem with us, a lot of us, we have our walk on the rocks instead of the rock, Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. So when He's a stronghold for what? In the day of trouble. When that troubled day comes, Jesus is right there with you. Amen. To help you to get through that troubled day. Listen, but here, we're not done yet. It says... And he knoweth, God knows all things, he knoweth them that trust in him. You have to trust in him 
Amen. To know that he's good and to know that he's got your back. Right. He's got you covered. Right. He'll be there in the day of trouble. What kind of trouble, Pastor? Any kind of trouble. Thank it doesn't matter what kind of trouble. Thank you, Lord. He's a troubleshooter. Amen. Amen. You got to call on him. You got to trust him. That's right. Bible said, lean not to thine own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge Him, and He will direct your paths. Amen. But we have to acknowledge Him. He knows those who trust Him. Yes. Amen. Amen. We see here, in spite of our troubles, we trust the Lord, and know no matter what, that God is good. Yes. He's not good sometimes. He's good all the time. That's right. He's not good to you once in a while. He's good to you all the time. Right. You might not be good to Him, but He's good to you. Right. Uh, Thank you Jesus. Let me keep on going here. Question. I got a question for you. Is there anyone here that never has any troubles? Because if you don't, I need you to come up here and preach to us. I need to hear how you did it. Uh, you don't have to move because I know that everybody's got troubles. Eh? Make no mistake about it. We all face troubles. Amen. But you know what the secret is? Can I give you the secret? I got the recipe. It's how we handle the troubles. That's right. It's the attitude. That's right. See, some people handle trouble attitude. and they get bitter. Uh, you always hear me say, don't get bitter, get better. That's right. yeah. Amen. Because bitterness never helped nobody. That's right. They fight, you argue. The Bible says that's why you don't receive nothing from the Lord. That's right. Amen. It's how you, it's how you handle your troubles. What, how, what do you Is the glass half empty all the time for you, or do you see it half full? Mm -hmm. Really comes down to the attitude, doesn't it? That's right. mm -hmm. Hello? Yes. It comes down to the attitude. It comes down to what you really believe God's Word says, and do you take it for granted, or do you take it for real? Mm -hmm. Is this just for so-and-so, or is it for you too? Mm -hmm. Is this just for the pastor, or is this for everybody? Is this for the chosen few or is it for everybody? It's for whosoever will Amen. come to the Lord should be saved. It's for whosoever will believe on the Lord shall receive from the Lord. Amen. God's not respecter of persons, in other words. Amen. Whoever believes for the Lord will receive if you don't ask a myth, the Bible says. In other words, in other words, you could ask, you know, we all have prayer lives, hopefully. We all pray for things, but if you're praying you know, for a mansion and you're praying for a, a Cadillac and a Lincoln in the garage, then that's a myth. Mm -hmm. Hate to break it to you, but that's a myth. That's right. That's right. All right. How about a Chevy? Will Chevy do? Ford? Mm -hmm. no, I want 